Good morning and a very warm welcome to our service on this Pentecost Sunday, Sunday the 31st of May. It's really wonderful to have you with us as we celebrate the birthday of the church. I love Pentecost Sunday, it should be such a celebration and it's going to be very different this year. Today should have been our confirmation service but obviously we cannot go ahead with that at the moment. We continue to pray for our confirmation candidates and look forward to a time when we can hold our confirmation services. Thank you to all the photographs that you sent in. You will see this a little bit later in our service this morning. There are a few things happening this week. So on Tuesday of this week at seven o'clock, we have our youth group that's happening via Zoom. Uh, if your young person would like an invitation to that, then please contact me and I will send that to you. On Saturday, we have a men's breakfast, again via Zoom. Uh, if you contact Mel or me if you want the invitation uh, and we will get that to you, but please uh, join that breakfast if you'd like to um, for some food and some chat. I'd also like to say thank you on behalf of Richard. He's walking, as we know, from Lindisfarne down to Land's End to raise some money for Mission Possible UK. Today is now day 25. Yesterday was day 24 uh, and we joined in in part of his walk on day 24 and he was doing 12 miles. Thank you to any of you that walked. Thank you to any of you that have prayed. If you're able to give or support them in any way, that would be wonderful. And don't worry if you didn't do anything yesterday um, because Richard has another 15 days of doing this. Today is a rest day and we bless Richard as he rests. Um, but please do feel free to continue to pray for him as he does this amazing feat, walking predominantly around his house or his garden, but raising money for a charity very dear to us at St Peter's and certainly to him and to Ruth. So we're going to move into our worship shortly, but let us pray on this Pentecost Sunday. And so we pray, come Holy Spirit, come into our worship, come into our lives, come into our homes and fill us with your love, with your peace, with your passion. Stir us afresh to move and to work for you. Come Holy Spirit. You may well know that we are just now at the end of the period for thy kingdom come. Today is the ending of the period of global prayer so we're going to join some worship from Thy Kingdom Come, I think a couple of years ago, as we join Matt Redman and sing Bless the Lord, O My Soul. Hey, you all lead this today, okay? Here we go. Bless the Lord. You're 
name is great and your heart is kind for all your goodness I will keep translation. On the day Pentecost was being fulfilled, all the disciples were gathered in one place. Suddenly they heard the sound of a violent blast of wind rushing into the house out of the heavenly realm. The roar of the wind was so overpowering it was all anyone could bear. Then all at once a pillar of fire appeared before their eyes. It separated into tongues of fire that engulfed each one of them. They were all filled and equipped with the Holy Spirit and were inspired to speak in tongues, empowered by the Spirit to speak in languages they had never learned. Now, at that time, there were Jewish worshippers who had emigrated from many different lands to live in Jerusalem. When the people of the city heard the roaring sound, crowds came running to where it was coming from, stunned over what was happening, because each one could hear the disciples speaking in his or her own language. Bewildered, they said to one another, aren't these all Galileans? So how is it that we hear them speaking in our own languages? 
We are northeastern Iranians, northwestern Iranians, Elamites, and those from Mesopotamia, Judea, east central Turkey, the coastal areas of the Black Sea, Asia, north central Turkey, southern Turkey, Egypt, Libyans who are neighbours of Cyrene, visitors from all over the Roman Empire, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking of God's mighty wonder in our own dialects. They all stood there, dumbfounded and astonished, saying to one another, What is this phenomenon? But others poked fun at them and said, They're just drunk on new wine. Peter stood up with the eleven apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, my fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. You need to clearly understand what's happening here. These people are not drunk like you think they are, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. This is the fulfilment of what was prophesied through the prophets Joel. For God says, This is what I do in the last days. I will pour out my spirit on everybody and cause your sons and daughters to prophesy. And your young men will see visions, and your old men will experience dreams from God. The Holy Spirit will come upon all my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. I will reveal startling signs and wonders in the sky above and mighty miracles on the earth below. Blood and fire and pillars of clouds will appear, for the sun will be turned dark and the moon blood red before the great and awesome appearance of the day of the Lord. But everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Thank you, Imi and Adam, for doing our reading for today. And welcome to our kitchen. We're going to be using some items in our kitchen today in our Pentecost service. So let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for this story of Pentecost, for those first disciples being filled with the Holy Spirit. As we listen to your word today, as we think about what that means for us today, open our hearts, open our minds, Open our eyes and our ears to your presence, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I wonder if there is something that you have really longed to have. Perhaps at the moment you're really longing for a holiday, or you're really longing to go and do something that you, you just can't do at the moment. Perhaps go away to see family and friends. I wonder if there's something that you've ever actually wanted, an item, Maybe it's something that you saved up for. Maybe it's something you've asked for uh, people on your birthday or at Christmas to give you. My lovely dad had always wanted to have a power drill. Now we as a family were a little bit worried about this because his DIY skills were less than good, is the best way I can put it. One of the bonuses is living in a vicarage now and living in a manse then when we were Methodists is that most of the work gets done for you, you don't have to do very much DIY. So Dad didn't have a huge amount of opportunity to do this. But Dad had always wanted this power drill. We'd never bought it, he'd never bought it. But for his 50th birthday, we as a family saved up and we bought him this power drill. I remember him opening it and looking at it, opening the case that it was in and taking it out and inspecting it. He was so proud to own this drill. Very sadly, that drill never got used. I think in part because of us as a family being slightly worried about what he might do. That drill stayed in its case. And if we think about our story at Pentecost, we think about those disciples who had seen so much. They'd been scared when they saw Jesus on the cross. They then met Jesus after he rose again and were trying to make sense of all of this. And today we come to that time when Jesus did just as he said after he ascended and he sent the Holy Spirit. Now those disciples could have decided that they weren't actually going to do anything with this amazing thing. They'd seen the tongues of fire on people's heads. They'd heard people speaking in other languages and understood them. They had seen so many things, but they had to make that choice whether to use the gift that they'd been given. 
That poor drill sat in its case, and to my knowledge I can't think it ever got used uh, before my dad died very sadly. And to use the drill, to use something like that that you've got, you've got to actually plug it in. You've got to put it into a socket and use it. And for us today, thinking about this story and the Holy Spirit, we've got to plug in to God. We've got to plug into the Holy Spirit. We've got to open ourselves to receive the gifts of God to us. We know that on that first Pentecost, so many people became Christians, those first Christians essentially, uh, 3,000 on that day and many more later. And my goodness, do we long for that to happen today. But first of all, we need to plug in. We need to be open to receive the Holy Spirit, open to what the Holy Spirit might do in our lives. And we might not always like the things that we have to do when the Holy Spirit is living and active and moving and breathing in us. But when we're open to that, God is at work and God will do amazing things through us. So I've got our popcorn maker here and we're going to look at that for a moment. I've just taken a few pieces of popcorn. At the moment, that's just popcorn out of a packet. You really wouldn't want to eat this. And so what you have to do with the popcorn is put it into the popcorn machine. You have to introduce it to wind, to heat, and then it'll become popcorn. So let's watch as this goes through what it does. with these dry kernels of popcorn. They're not really much use to anybody like this. And they had to go through the process of the wind, of the heat, of the air, to become the final product, which is popcorn, which is something that we can eat. If we think about our story of Pentecost, we have some amazing pictures of what that might look like. I love to picture the story and I sometimes Googled images to see what different people have, have thought of when they thought of Pentecost. And our reading tells us about the violent winds that came into that house, that house where the disciples were. It told us of the roar of wind that overpowered everybody. It told us about the pillar of fire that split into separate tongues of fire on individuals. If you think of that language, of those pictures, it's so powerful. And the Holy Spirit is so powerful. And one of the other things about this reading is it talked about how that wind, how that roaring wind, those flames, equipped those disciples what they needed to do. Equipped those first people who became those first Christians on that day. We can make a choice. We can choose to be those people without the life of the Holy Spirit in us without that power working through us. Or we can choose to accept, to invite the Holy Spirit in, to be changed, to be transformed, to be something more of what God wants us to be and who he wants us to be. And then we go through that process. We become something that is useful to this world. We become something that is empowered by the Holy Spirit that can go out and proclaim the love and the life of Jesus Christ. So you may want to think about that. You may want to go and make some popcorn if you're able to. And think about how the Holy Spirit sets us on fire, moves us and changes us and transforms us to be God's people working here on earth. Today is the church's birthday. It's the day we think about those very first Christians. We think about how the church was formed on this day. We think about Peter's amazing speech about what he said at that time. And we might have had a party if we were in church. We can't do that very sadly. But what some people have done is to dress up in some party clothes, 
The My Church members have sent their photos in, and thank you so much to all of you who have done that. And the video that you're going to see is forming our church, the people that we are. And what we pray for us is that we won't be these kernels. We won't be that drill that's never been plugged in before. But that for us, we will accept and invite and welcome the Holy Spirit into our church, into us as a group of people that we are. And that we will be changed and transformed into something more of God's life and love and power in this world. So I hope you enjoy watching the video of our church. many so many of our church members so thank you again to all of you for that it's just wonderful to be part of our church at this time as the church has left the building and so we come to move into our time of prayer and I'm going to use the popcorn that we used earlier I went and had a look at what prayers were set for today and they all talked about Holy Spirit come and change and shake us and transform us I kind of think, in a way, that's already happening in our world today. And we have to be open to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying and wants to do at this time. As Sue said last week, things will look different. When we go back to church, our world looks very different. And so as we think, in the context of all those things, let us pray. Father God, we think of these popcorn kernels. They have little use at this time. 
but we thank you that they are something that can be formed into something that can be changed and transformed into something for us to eat. As we think of these popcorn kernels, Father, we pray that we will not be these people, but we'll be people that plug into you, that plug into the power of your almighty and wonderful Holy Spirit. Father, we pray that you will enable us and allow us to open ourselves to be transformed in the way that these become this popcorn. Father, help us to open our lives to receive the gifts that you give us, to use them and to know these things in our lives today. Father, we pray for a world that needs to be transformed. We pray for countries around the world where there is famine. We pray for, pray for places in our own country where there is poverty. We give thanks for the work of our food bank, which transforms this into this, into the fact that people can have something through the generosity of others. Father, may we transform the things that you give us into what you want them to be. We pray for places in our world where there is war. We pray for our refugee camps that could be ravaged through this virus. We pray for those people that have taken your Holy Spirit and have used it and are serving your purpose in the places where you've put them. We pray for your anointing and your blessing on them. We pray for Richard and his continued walk and his continued support and care for Mission Possible UK. We thank you for those people who are models to us of who you want us to be. And we pray that we will be changed and transformed today and every day. Father, we pray for our country, a country recovering in some way after this virus, but still in the very early phases. We pray particularly for our schools, for our teachers, for our children, for parents, for governors, for cleaners in this week, for all those staff needed in school. We pray for difficult decisions that are having to be made by our government, by our schools and in many different places about what they do. And we pray for those people who are still in hospital we pray for our frontline and key workers in many different ways. And we know that you can transform a terrible situation into something that gives you glory and honour. So Father, at this time, we pray thy kingdom come in our world today. And we saw that video, we saw that pictures, pictures of our church. And we pray for each member of our church, whether they are near to us today, whether they are far away. We pray for them and we give thanks for each person. And Father, change and transform us. Think again about that fire, about that wind. Father, where we need that in our lives, bring that and change us and transform us today. We remember those who are unwell at this time. We remember those whose lives have been changed through this virus in many different ways. We pray for people who are lonely. We pray for people who are fearful today. And may they know that changing and transforming power again. So Father, we lift up all these prayers. We lift up all the people in our hearts and minds at this time. We know that you hear each one of our prayers and you can come into each of these situations and change them. And for ourselves, Father, change us from these kernels into something that is active in your world today. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Spirit came upon the disciples gathered in fear in the upper room on the first Pentecost. And the result was they went out. Well, the last few weeks we've known all about going out. We haven't in fact been able to go in for good reasons, but not everyone agrees with me on that. But what does it mean for us today? I want to pick up a couple of things from the story in Acts chapter 2. Because they are characteristic of what the Holy Spirit does in each of us and in all of us and in the world around us. First, there is unity created. And the biggest difference is we have our languages. They set our culture, they divide us because we can't communicate with each other. And so that miracle on Pentecost, reversing the story of the Tower of Babel, in which people hear what God is saying, whatever their language, that miracle is a sign of the work of the Holy Spirit. That miracle happens today. In our prayers, we reach out round the world. We pray for the Holy Spirit to open people's hearts, the love of Christ. That's what the Thy Kingdom Come prayer season is about. Each of us prays for five people, not as a recruiting exercise, but so that they know they're loved by Jesus Christ come into his body and hear what God is saying to them. Second, they go out and the numbers increase. Growth in the church is in many parts of the world normal. And in many parts of our own country, it is normal. Not by bludgeoning people, but by loving them into seeing who Jesus Christ is. At the end of the story, 3,000 people become part of the church. At the end of the story, 5,000 people become part of the church. It's an extraordinary story. It's about repentance, turning around and going with God, learning to depend on God. And we see that around the world. I've seen it in the last months in Ebola-stricken areas, and I've seen it in hospitals in this country. People coming to depend on Jesus Christ, and in the darkest places, finding hope, even amongst coronavirus. And lastly, it creates a new and vibrant community, different culturally in every part of the world, but it's new and it's full of the presence of God and that makes it so overwhelmingly attractive. That is the third part of our prayer, a community that shares with one another, that loves one another, that breaks bread, that worships. We will be as soon as possible back in our church buildings. But the church has been more open than other, than ever, driven out into the world in the power of the Spirit and expressing the compassion of love and love of Christ. May God continue to send us, to unite us, to inspire us and to draw others to share in what we have discovered of the love of Christ. Amen.
Thy kingdom come, Lord, teach us how to pray for all to know your joy, your peace and love, and know your friendship each and every day. The breath of Christ the Father's gentle God. I love that song. I love the original tune for what was Tell Out My Soul many years ago. Uh, it's been one of my favourite hymns for many years. But I love the new version um, about Thy Kingdom Come, Lord, teach us how to pray. And my goodness, do we need to keep praying at this time. So can I invite you to do that this week, just to enter into prayer and pray and just talk to God about whatever is going on in your life at this time. Thank you also to the Archbishop of Canterbury for his words about Pentecost. And it reminds us how the Holy Spirit was sent at that first Pentecost, but is still sent again today to us and every day to fill us, to send us to people that are in need. We can't always go to those places at the moment we want to go to. We can't always go and see those people that we want to at the moment. We can always pick up the phone though or write a letter. So the Holy Spirit was sent to send us 
to unite us if we think about the story of how people from different regions, different languages could understand each other. The Holy Spirit is a uniting force in our world and we also need that so much today. The Holy Spirit is also sent to inspire us, to find the given gifts that we have that God has given us, to inspire us with a passion for God, to go and tell other people about him and therefore also to draw others into what we know, to tell them about the love and the life that we have, to know Jesus and the love that he gives to us and has for everyone. So this week, we may be at the end of Thy Kingdom Come, but I invite you to keep praying, Thy Kingdom Come, as we want to see God's, God's heaven on earth at this time. So let's pray. Father, we thank you on this Pentecost that we remember that story so many years ago, but that story that is still current to us today as we think about the work of the Holy Spirit then and how your Holy Spirit still moves through this world, still works within us and still helps us to reach out to those around us. As we move into this new week, I pray that you will just inspire us with the work that you want us to do that you will enable your Holy Spirit to set that fire inside us for the things that you want us to be doing. And then although we may not be able to be sent out at this time, to still hear your words to us and to act on those. So Father, just fill us with your Holy Spirit today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As you go into this new week, Continue to stay safe. We know that there are more changes coming, but please stay safe. Look after each other and may God bless you in this season and always. Amen. <laughs>